What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Jeremy, joined by Andrew. High five. High five. That was, that was high five. Most of you still listen to the show, so you've got to hear a high five. But if you want to watch this show, of course, you can find, we drop the video into every episode page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can also find them on YouTube. Thank you for being here. This is word association number 13. Andrew is going to try to stump me yep. with some words. And I'm unstumpable, and that's cool. But <laughs> what you're going to get out of this is, is really just some different ways to think about martial arts as it relates to everything. And that's why I like doing these episodes. If you also like these episodes or other episodes or any of the things that we do in our efforts to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, I hope you will do something to help us grow, whether that's share episodes with people, buy things at whistlekick.com. You can use the code podcast15 to save 15% on mm -hmm. anything there. Show up to one of our events, uh, write for marshalljournal.com. I mean, there's so many things you can do. What's our goal here? Our goal with Whistlekick is to get everybody in the world to train for six months. So anything you do that helps us grow, helps us reach more people, helps us towards that goal. Is that your tongue? A little grumbly. I wonder if that showed up on the... I don't know. We'll I, I, I didn't eat breakfast either, yeah. so I might do the same thing. <laughs> but if nothing else, uh, you get to watch or listen to us chat and be a little ridiculous. Yeah. We have fun doing that. Yeah. We're on location <clears throat> at Keene State College. Yep. In front of this fireplace. Uh, we imported this plant to round out the set. <laughs> um, it really brings the room together. It really ties the room <laughs> together, man. Uh, have, you, have you seen... Uh, Zach Galifianakis is uh, between two between ferns. Between two ferns. Yeah. So this is, you know, between two guys. Yeah. This is one spider plant between two men. <laughs> uh, okay. First thing. <laughs> uh, this bugs me. Can I can I turn the camera a little bit? Sure. Oh, that's better. Those watching will notice the little thing disappeared in the end. Oh, uh, okay. Right on. It bothered me. Anyway, uh, so this is Word Association. Mm -hmm. Martial Arts Word Association. This is our summer edition. So I have ten. I have. It's a good thing I'm wearing shorts. I know I got flip flops on. Flip flops. You can't see, but. Oh. All right. So uh, I have you ten words. Ten words. Ten words. All right. All having something to do with summer mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Uh, some of them might be a little. Less so connected, but we're, they're there. <laughs> All right. All right. So here we go. The first word is kayak. You pick this because you have a kayak. I mean, I sure. I mean, it's a good summer word, but I do have a kayak. I have three. If you want a kayak? Actually, I have four. If you want to get technical, I don't know that that's technical, but it's true. It is true. So when I think about a kayak, I think about an individual sport, right? I'm sure there are, I've seen two person kayaks, but I don't Ten know. Kayaks exist, yep. I don't know very many people that kayak with multiple people in the kayak. It's usually a solo thing. Even if you're doing it with other people, mm -hmm. you're in the kayak by yourself and you might be with a group, but you're still kind of charting your own course. Well, that's martial arts group training. The instructor is kind of the body of water. You don't dictate what the body of water is. You show up, you get in the boat, and you paddle around and you do your thing. And you might say, well, well Jeremy, I have far less independent uh, thought. I have less control over what goes on in a class than I do when I'm in a kayak. Well, I might challenge that. Mm. Because when I show up to class, in a typical hour-long class, which is what most people train, can you go 100% for the whole hour? No. Not possible. You can't go your 100% for the hour. So what part of class do you put the most energy into? What part of the class are you the most attentive for? What part of the class do you smile the most through, right? You have that body of water, which is the class and how it's run and everything, but you still have a lot of option for how you navigate it yourself. Mm. Okay. I and see then that. what do you do with that experience later? Mm. Do, you, do you go back and practice? Or maybe the kayak equivalent is you sit around and think about your day on the water. Or uh, maybe you, you 
clean your kayak or have a drink or whatever and reflect, right? There, there's still a lot of, of post activity that you can derive value from. Hmm. Okay. I see that. Uh, tandem kayaks do exist, mm -hmm. two people in one kayak. They're, I don't see them often, but, yeah. they, but I know that they do exist. Um, okay. So the next question, the next word, um, uh, it'll be interesting to see if you relate it to the definition you did for kayak. Mm -hmm. When I need to take my kayak somewhere, I put it on a roof rack mm -hmm. on top of my car. So your word is roof rack. Hmm. Okay. Nobody is thrilled to have an empty roof rack on the car. It is pointless, right? A roof rack has value mm -hmm. only because of what else you can do with it. I've never known anyone that put a roof rack on a car for aesthetics. I would agree. I've never known anyone who said, you know, you know what the top of my car is missing? Something that, that costs money and slightly reduces my fuel economy while potentially making a lot of noise at high speed. I, I've never met anyone who said that. And to me, that's what an empty roof rack is. But it has value because of the additional storage it can provide. You can put, what, two kayaks on your roof rack? I can get three, actually. Three, okay. So... You, your wife, the kid, mm -hmm. three of you can load up and go do something. How would you do that without the roof rack? Trailer, maybe. Uh, I, you'd still have to have some, some additional mm -hmm. thing. Same idea, right? You're not going to pull a trail, an empty trailer around town just going, wee, look at my trailer, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's, it is strictly for utility. There are aspects of our training that, and they can vary depending on the person, that you don't enjoy, but they have utility. For a lot of people, it's the conditioning side. I don't know very many people who enjoy physically strenuous tasks in the moment, right? So maybe it's, okay, we're doing a bunch of push-ups. Or maybe in your school, you do body conditioning. You know, you're banging shins or forearms together. I don't know. There are people. I don't know a lot of people who say, you know, this is my favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it does provide a lot of benefit. If you get really good at that conditioning, whichever kind we're talking about, you'll have times down the line where you say, I'm glad I did that. That enabled me to do this, mm. right? If you become stronger or fitter, um, you can go on Amazon right now and find a short book that I wrote called Stronger People Are Harder to Kill, mm -hmm. right? Which is kind of true. And fatter people are harder to kidnap. I... I choose not to respond to that statement. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I imagine that that is, I, I've never tried to kidnap anyone, but, but logic would suggest that there is truth there. Probably. Okay. <laughs> but they don't run as fast. That's true. So don't. maybe it depends on the type of kidnapping that's occurred. I guess. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. You look back on, oh, I, I did not enjoy the the getting stronger the getting fitter mm -hmm. the body conditioning i didn't enjoy spending the money on the roof rack i didn't enjoy the noise it made i didn't enjoy the inconvenience because let's face it your roof rack probably sits on the car most of the time for the summer yeah because they're annoying to put on and take off absolutely i've had them yep so they stay on and you're you know this thing's annoying but then when you use it for its intended purpose you're really thankful mm -hmm. and i think that there are a lot of aspects of martial arts that you can say this about. And again, it differs for the person. I know people who look at sparring that way. Hmm. I know people who look at basics that way. I know people who look at forms that way. I know people who look at self-defense or breaking that way. It all has utility. And sometimes the, util the, the value to you is strictly in what the utility allows you to do next. All right, I dig it. Yeah, that's good. All right, next word. Barbecue, not the food, the, the actual the get event. together, the event, the barbecue get together. Okay. I have said to, so most of you out there know, I work with a variety of businesses, primarily martial arts schools in helping them grow, you know, building retention, increasing revenue, growing recruitment, etc. One of the big things, and I'll share this with all of you for free. Here's your freebie. The number one simple thing you can do 
to check all of the boxes at your school is have a monthly barbecue. And I suggest that happening on a Friday evening. And if you have to adjust your class schedule a little bit, it's worth doing. You have a class that everyone is welcome to and you invite them to stay after for a potluck. You run the grill, you know, you buy some burgers, some hot dogs, whatever. Everybody shows up and it allows you to remember that people are human beings outside of their training. One of my, the funniest statements, I, I remember this so many times as a kid, I didn't recognize you with clothes on. Mm, yep, yep. Right? A statement you've probably said. Absolutely. Oh, I've never seen you without a, a gi, a dobok, training yep. uniform, whatever you call it. And to see people dressed down, so to speak, mm -hmm. is such a different experience. And it helps build camaraderie. It helps build those relationships. And when people have friendships and you're extending that by hosting that barbecue or whatever you choose to call it, you end up keeping people in training longer because it gives them yet another reason to show up because they want to see their friends. All right. Now, one of the things you will often find at a barbecue is potato salad. Okay. Potato salad. I used to hate everything with mayonnaise as a kid. Hmm. Didn't like it. I didn't like mayonnaise at all. I don't know what it is. Uh, but now, egg salad, potato salad, especially potato and egg salad, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's much better than either on their own. Potato salad is the how you do this kata correctly. Okay, elaborate. People that really like potato salad and make potato salad get really passionate about how their potato salad is better than everybody else's potato salad. Mm. And that if you add certain ingredients to potato salad, your potato salad is wrong. Mm, and interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the same way that you might say, I can't believe they changed that move in that form. Mm. Right. It, it's it. And let's face it. Does it really matter? There are probably potato versions of potato salad that you like better than others. Sure. But if you like potato okay. salad, there's a pretty good chance that you're at least going to find that you accept most versions of potato salad. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same way with a form. If you do it this way, and that works for you, but then you're working with somebody else and they're doing it this way, is it really that big of a deal? Now, maybe it is in the context of your school. You know, a student has gone off and changed the official. Maybe you don't do that, okay? But potato salad is something people get really wrapped around the axle about in a way that grossly exaggerates how much it matters. Mm. Coleslaw is the same way. Coleslaw. That's not your next word, but <laughs> good. Coleslaw is definitely the same. Like, I, I like my coleslaw a certain way, and uh, if it's not the way I really like it, I just won't eat it. Yeah. I'm very particular about my coleslaw, but not so much my potato salad, interestingly enough. Okay, <clears throat> next word. If you're at a, a, a barbecue get-together and you got some potato salad, you're probably going to have something cooked on a grill. Mm. Okay. There are a few different ways I could go with this. Kind, kind of similar to potato salad, right? You know, I, I can't, you, you're cooking that wrong. The heat's too high, right? Everybody's got their own way of grilling. When, I mean, let's face it, for most of our time on earth, we put meat in fire and put in face, mm -hmm. right? Like that was, that was kind of how we did it. But there's also something really interesting about the grill at a barbecue. It attracts attention. Mm -hmm because it's someone doing something. And if you look at any group of people, not everyone is good at just walk. You're great at this. This is one of the reasons I love going to events with you. You'll walk into a room, know nobody, and have seven friends in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's, a, that's about right. 
Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. But not everyone's good at that. Mm-hmm. That's true. This is something I'm getting better at. But historically, if I went to a barbecue, if I didn't know people, I'd probably end up over at the grill because you've got a captive audience and the person running the grill. Mm-hmm. Half mm-hmm. the time, I ended up running the grill. <laughs> but it, because it gave me something to do. But it's also, there's an activity, right? Later on, after everyone's eaten, what happens? People are watching other people throw horseshoes. Probably, let's let's face it, I'm never going to watch horseshoes on TV. Would probably be one of the most boring things I could imagine. Yeah, but in the yeah. absence of anything else, mm-hmm. people want to watch something. Now, why do I bring that up here? Because most martial arts competitions do not do a good job of recognizing the fact that people just want to watch something that they understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's pretty easy to understand what's going on in a grill. Mm-hmm. It's easy to understand what's going on throwing horseshoes. People want to watch things that they understand. And I've said it before. I will continue to say it. And until we have the resources to make wholesale change in the industry, I'll keep encouraging other people to try to create this change. Until martial arts competitions cater to the spectators rather than the participants, mm-hmm. our the, the, the financial side and the opportunity side of martial arts competition will not grow. All right. Before everyone comes over for the barbecue, you're going to want to make sure your lawn is mowed. Mm. So, lawn mower. Mm. How you mow your lawn is the style of landscaping. It's the martial arts style. Okay. I want to pause. I'm not talking about how you mow your lawn. I'm talking lawn mower itself. Okay. I understand. Okay. Okay. I I, I may I may veer a little bit. I may veer a little bit. You and I can take the same lawn mower and mow our lawn very differently. We can give it to four or five other people. They can mow the same piece of grass Mm -hmm. differently. How many ways can you punch? A handful of different ways. Not very many. Yeah. Right, I mean, not a gazillion, but in terms of hand position, maybe there 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 are a few, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can implement those very differently. Mm -hmm. There are only so many ways the body moves; only some of them make sense through through the context of combat. And yet, like a lot of things, and and this is this is changing, right? And and most of our audience does not feel this way, but there are people who will say that is not how you cut the grass. That is not how you use a lawnmower. Mm. It has to be done this way. Other, you know, otherwise X, Y, Z, right? Personal preference becomes valued so extremely that we forget it's personal preference and we feel really passionate about it. And so we try to backfill that opinion with some logical justification instead of just saying, I like it better that way. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want me to know how I mow my lawn? I do. Uh, I never mow my lawn the same way two times in a row. <laughs> yep. So I'll mow it left to right. You mm-hmm. see my lawn. Mm-hmm. So I'll mow it left to right all the way up. The next time I'll mow it straight up and down. The next time I'll mow it at a diagonal. Mm-hmm. And the next time I'll mow it on the opposite diagonal. Mm-hmm. And then I go back. Do you ever mow it in a, a, a in concentric squares? Not typically, no. But, yep, yeah, that's how I mow my lawn. I do it different every time because well, that way you get all the grass. Like if you mow it in the same, I've, this could be total BS. Don't at me, everybody. But I feel like if you always mow the lawn one direction, your wheels are going to be always pushing grass down in that same direction. So I want to get it all these different directions so I get all the grass up. So what I, what I did recently sold my house, but what I did when I was cutting the grass uh, I had a, uh, I had an acre with a, a self-propelled, you know, push non-rider mower. Mm-hmm. Would not make that mistake again. Uh, but I I make a lap, and then I turn and I cut back and I have just enough on the next lap to pull back on the wheels. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wasn't using quite the full width. I was using eighty yeah. yeah. percent of it. Yeah. So anyway, that's how I do it. <clears throat> now your next word. Is related to lawnmower, but is definitely a different tool, and it's a weed whacker. It's the detail. It's the nuance. 
It's all the little bits. It's the difference between a beautiful lawn and a nice lawn. I don't care what your, your backyard looks like or your front yard. There are probably things in there that you can't mow all the way up against. In fact, I've Absolutely. never known a lawn that didn't have something, right? Because maybe it's the edge of your house. And unless you have some crazy mower that has like spinny things on the end, or you mow exclusively with a DR trimmer and you use that as your mower, you, you have edge. Yep. Yep. Now you might get really close. Maybe it's hidden, but you can take that weed whacker and you can take it to the next level. The difference is a lot of people don't see the value in investing that time mm. in the same way that a lot of people don't see the value in investing the time in fine tuning things in their forms or their sparring or their whatever. Right. And what's the easiest way, or I should say the most effective way to, to get that detail. It's one-on-one -on -one training. It's you know, it's a private lesson with your instructor or someone who knows more than you, a senior student to say, that's good but now do this or try that. Or when you're doing this, think about that or follow up this with that, you know, whatever that is. Going to class, going home, never training at home, never having private lessons is the, I mow my grass the same way every time. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. never weed whack. I never change the pattern of martial arts. All right, cool. So we're going to, uh, last one having to do with our <clears throat> outdoor barbecue. If you have a, a large deck on your house, uh, often you might need to pressure wash it. Mm. So pressure washer. Mm. Pressure washer. I don't think I've ever used a pressure washer. I certainly know what one you want. Mm -hmm. You, when we come back to the house, you can use mine. Okay. I have one. Just so I can I can say I've used a pressure sure. washer. Cool. All right. We can check that box off my, my bucket list. <laughs> my my bingo card bucket list. It's about as specialized as you get. It does one thing. Mm -hmm. It removes debris from whatever it is. If it's used improperly can be very destructive. Mm -hmm. My yeah. understanding is a pressure washer should never face a window unless it's especially, you know, like uh, you've got to I mean, manage the pressure on it, right? Maybe you want a broken window. And I think that we have plenty of things in our training that are like that. I was talking to someone yesterday and he'll, <clears throat> he'll be listening to this episode. I'm not necessarily going to, to, say his name, he was sparring. And one of the things, one of the rules, there are a handful of rules that are very common in sparring at your typical striking martial arts schools. One of them is don't grab someone's leg when they kick because the risk of injury is massive. Mm -hmm. Well, this person got injured because someone that uh, apparently is a wrestler grabbed the leg. And what was interesting, so we're recording this on Friday. This was a Thursday conversation. Just on Wednesday, I had to tell one of my students, don't grab the leg. There's too much risk for injury. There are times to practice that stuff. And it's usually when you have mats and you're going slower. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly effective. If you mean to do that, it can be really effective. You can get your job done. But if you just casually do it if, or if you're not paying attention, if you don't get it quite right, things can go sideways. I would imagine like a pressure washer. Yeah. Okay. Probably, po probably a warning that says don't point it at your face. Uh, it would be hard to point it at your face because they're usually really long. So you can't do that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. That is wise. Don't put it in somebody else's face. All right, so we have two more words. Okay. The next Did you word, memorize all these? Uh, I, most of them. Yes, yeah, that's impressive. So uh, the next one, we're going to veer away from the, the barbecue. Okay. Okay. We are going to go on a road trip. Okay. Because like we're going trips. on vacation. 
Road trip. Yay! That's your word. Look, kids, Big Ben. Um, you'd be hard time. You'd be hard pressed to see Big Ben on a road trip from here. Before I answer, yeah. Does getting on a plane, getting off the plane, getting in a car and driving around not constitute a road trip? That part of it is a road trip. I the yes. moment you're you get out of the car to get on another mode of transport, it is no longer a road trip. I would be interested to hear hmm. the audience's thoughts. I, I on think this the audience needs to weigh because in. Because I do not see that as a road trip. I see a road trip at like if I go on vacation to Scotland, which I have done multiple times, and I I'm there for a week, a week and a half, and I get in the car and drive somewhere. I don't consider that a road trip. I'm a, I'm I'm on vacation in a car. Yeah. I'm talking. I, I pack up. I pack up the car from the house yeah. because we're gonna go camping or whatever. Pack it up. We start driving. So let's say trip. you fly into London. You fly into Heathrow. You yeah. rent a car. You pack it up and you drive to Nor- and you drive to Northern Ireland. I don't consider that a road trip. That's just me personally. But okay. Regardless, go ahead. Answer your answer this is, road trip. I, this is interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, for most people, road trips are about a couple things. Mm-hmm. There's there's an element of self sufficiency, right? Now maybe it's for cost concerns, but most people that go on a road trip they bring snacks, mm-hmm. they sure. bring a bunch of clothes, they maybe you're bringing some camping gear, right? Let's face it, there are very few places you would drive where you wouldn't be passing the opportunities to buy all the things you needed. You could buy more clothes, you could buy food, you could buy all the things that you want, but you choose not to. Mm -hmm. Now, again, maybe it's for cost concerns, but there's, there's also something kind of interesting about just loading everything in and saying, I think I have everything, right? We don't, we, we're really good at living in our homes with everything to a point of excess. But I think for a lot of us, figuring out where that simplicity is, I think resonates. I think it's it's really interesting to say, okay, can I get everything I need for a week in the trunk? Which becomes more complicated the more people in the car. Mm-hmm. Right? If you've got a family of six, you probably have a roof rack. Maybe a trailer. Maybe a trailer. Okay. I think a lot of us have similar thoughts about our training. Now, maybe that comes through as, well, if I only had two or three techniques that I was allowed to use, you know, we've posed questions like that on this show and on social media, or maybe it's, does all this stuff actually work for me? And maybe you step into competition of some sort. Knowing how the things that we have with us, the things that we've chosen to take, to develop, to work on, to make our own, just as we select what goes in the car, is an interesting exercise. And I think a lot of us like making those choices because the consequences aren't huge. Mm. Because you get in the car and you drive and you realize, I forgot extra socks. Well, you can find somewhere with socks or heaven forbid you wear the same pair of socks for a couple of days. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, if you're camping, you leave them outside of the tent overnight mm-hmm. so you don't smell them. But trying to understand how all of this works without severe consequences is appealing to people, which is why point sparring is, I think, so appealing to people. Is point sparring the same as self-defense on the street in an unprovoked altercation? No, nobody thinks it is, but it's closer than not. It's a new environment, probably with new people. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are, yeah, there are rules, but it helps you understand, okay, well, when this happens, I did this. When this happens, I did that. But you usually get to go home afterwards. I've only seen a few concussions in my decades of martial arts training and competition with point sparring. It's usually pretty safe. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to be said for, huh, how did what I choose work out in this environment? All right. Last word. We got in the car. We packed everything up. We went on a road trip because we're going camping. 
I used a lot of what I would have said about camping for a road trip. Camping for some of us is type one fun because we take away a lot of the things day to day that are frustrating about life, technology, the complexity of jobs, mm -hmm. uh, noises, running water. I don't camp where if I can't get water. <laughs> to, I, under, I understand to some people that's not camping, but you know, give me a campground. I want to be able to go get some water. Uh, I, I really don't want Giardia. That's not my idea of a good time. I know you can filter it. <laughs> For other people, camping is type two fun. They know they need it. There's something primal about it that they say, you know, I want to go out in the woods. I don't really enjoy it, but I know it's good for me. I know I sleep better. I know I feel rested. I know I need to detach from all of these things. And we see a, a similar experience at some of our events. Okay. So you could look at going camping as removing yourself from certain things, or you could look at it as immersing yourself in certain things, right? You can't, you can't fully immerse yourself and bring everything well with you, right? It doesn't quite work. All in weekend mm -hmm. is an immersive event. Yep. 48 hours, you train, you eat, you sleep. It's about all you do, right? Free training day. You train, you eat, about all you do mm -hmm. that day. Maybe you have some logistical travel. Maybe you're on a road trip to get there. When, when we train for you know an hour or two at a time, there, there's some benefit there. It's, it's, it's enjoyable, there's progress. When you go out for a walk for an hour or two, it's enjoyable, there's some benefit there. Mm -hmm. But something different happens when you dramatically extend the duration. You ever gone for a walk for a day? Maybe you call it a hike. That's a whole different experience than mm -hmm. walking down the street or walking even in the same environment. Yeah, that makes sense. And you, you get something different out of it. And so whether it's one of our events or somebody else's events, it doesn't really matter to me. If you've never had the opportunity to immerse yourself in an all-day training event, I hope you do. Because I think you'll find that you have a different relationship with martial arts after, even if it's the same people, even if you're doing the same things, there's something about putting the rest of life aside for a day or two or a week or whatever that allows you to embrace your training. Because if you know, I don't have to worry about those emails at work. I know yeah. somebody else has them. Yeah you can shut off that part of your brain and then what's left. Now, some people, that's why they hate camping mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they don't know how to shut off their brain. Yeah. Some people don't want to train for days on end for the same reason, which is exactly why you need to do it. All right. There you go. Boom. That concludes our the word is martial arts word association, summer edition, summer edition, number 13. Yep. My favorite and lucky number. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I gotta share this joke. Um, Mitch Hedberg, you know, Mitch yep, Hedberg. I so <laughs> I think it's on the first album. He says, You get an elevator, there's no num there's no thirteenth floor on an elevator. But you know what? People on the fourteenth floor, if you jump out the window, you'll die quicker. That's true. <laughs> My favorite uh joke about not about 13 but about camping because i thought you were going to go with a camping mm. joke there uh was stephen wright i don't know if you are familiar with that I, comedian I, I am. uh and he had a he had a joke where he went camping with his girlfriend and she was really not very smart she got um poison ivy on the brain the only way she could scratch it was to think about sandpaper <laughs> stephen wright is brilliant absolutely Who's your favorite comedian? Completely unrelated to martial arts. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for indulging us here. If you have words you want to submit, or maybe you have a theme idea, shoot it over to Andrew, andrewwhistlekick.com. And if you want to help us out, remember, 
we've got this great Patreon with bonus content, and you can join it for as little as $2 a month. Please consider doing that. And we've got some really cool changes coming for you over the next few weeks and months. Stay tuned. Get excited. We're excited. And remember, we're here to serve you. So if there are things that you need, you want, we want to hear your feedback. My email is jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media everywhere is at whistlekick. We appreciate you. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have, have a, a great, great day. day. Nailed that one. Nice That's good. Woo!